Hey guys, we are looking at irrational inequality and I hope I can help you solve this and feel confident in it. I'm going to give you some pretty specific steps to follow and you might be like, sweet, I can do that, but I don't know why it worked. Well, guess what? I'm not going to leave you hanging at the end. I'm going to show you why all these steps worked, why we did what we did. And it's really cool actually. All right. So the first thing we want to do is it's actually already done here. We want to get everything on one side, zero on the other side. We're good here. The next thing I want to do is see if anything can factor, and I see that my denominator can definitely factor. If you need a factoring review, I'll link it in the corner, but I'm just going to tell you what this factors to. You're welcome. So I've still got one on top. On bottom, I'm going to have x minus 7 times x plus 4, and we're still greater than 0. All right, from here, I am going to take each of these and set them equal to zero. I could set one equal to zero, but that's not true. So we're not going to do that. But I'm going to set x minus seven equal to zero and x plus four equal to zero. All right, so then I'm going to solve. So I'd add seven to both sides here, get x equals seven, subtract four from both sides and get x equals negative four. All right, now we're going to draw everyone's favorite thing in math, a number line. There it is. Isn't that pretty? And I want to represent each of these numbers on my number line. So I'm going to have negative 4 here and 7 approximately there. So I need to know now if I'm going to put an open or a closed circle on both of these spots. And how we tell is... First of all, I know both of these are going to be open circles. Why do I know that? Because if I were to plug these in for x, I would get a zero in the denominator, which is never okay in math. So those are going to be open circles. Now, if you have a different numerator, it's not just a one, you have numbers that aren't in the denominator. You will look at your sign to see if it's an open or closed circle. If you are greater than or less than, it's an open circle. If you're greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, it's a closed circle, okay? So I will link an example with one of those in the corner. Okay, from here, we are going to do something we affectionately call sign analysis. I want to know for each of these regions, less than negative four, between negative four and seven and greater than seven, when I plug in a number from that region for X, is my output positive or negative? The cool thing about sign analysis is I don't care what the actual number is. Isn't that nice? I just care if it's positive or negative. So let me show you what this looks like. So first I need to pick a number less than negative four. You could pick anything. You could go crazy and pick like negative 81 if you wanted, but I'm just going to pick negative 10. So when I plug in negative 10 for X, on top is a one, which is positive. On bottom, I'd have negative 10 minus seven, which would be negative and negative 10 plus four, which would also be negative. So on top, I have a positive. On bottom, I have a negative times a negative, which would be positive. And then a positive divided by a positive is positive. So this region to the left of negative four is positive. Okay, it might be at this point, you're like, what is she doing? That's weird. I'm gonna show you at the end, remember, so stick with me. All right, now we're gonna pick a number between negative four and seven. Zero's in there, so I'm gonna pick zero. You can pick a different number if you'd like. So on top, again, it's just a one, which is positive. On bottom, I've got zero minus seven, which is negative, and zero plus four, which would be positive. So on top, I've got a positive. On bottom, I've got a negative times a positive, which would be negative, and a positive divided by a negative is negative. So for this region, I got a negative output. All right, last one. I need to pick a number bigger than seven. I'm just going to pick 10. So when I pick 10, again, the top is still just positive with that one. 10 minus 7 would be positive, 10 plus 4 would be positive, and all those positives are going to end up being positive. Okay, great. Now what? Okay, to know where we go from here, we are going to look back at our problem. 
Remember, originally we were just wondering, where is this greater than zero? Well, what types of numbers are greater than zero? Positive numbers, right? So I am going to shade in my positive regions here. That kind of goes up, but you know. So what does this mean, right? This means you pick a number less than for any number, you plug it in for X and it'll make this statement true. You'll end up with a number over here that is greater than zero. Same with if you pick any number larger than seven, you plug it in for X and it'll make this statement true. You'll end up with a number greater than zero. Okay, isn't that cool? All right, but your teacher probably doesn't want you to turn in a number line as your answer. I mean, it'd be kind of cool, but they probably want it either written as an inequality or an interval notation. So how do I show this as an inequality? Well, I would say X can be any number less than negative four, right? That represents this, not equal to because that, that circle's not colored in, right? But that's not all X can equal. X can also be, so X can be less than negative four, or X can also be greater than seven. Doesn't that explain what X can be to make this statement true? Awesome. Okay, if your teacher wants it in interval notation, we would say pick any number from negative infinity, right? Any number less than negative four. So from negative infinity to negative four, both of those get parentheses. Infinity and negative infinity always get parentheses. Negative four gets a parenthesis because it's an open circle. Then we put a U for union, meaning this is together with, you can pick any number also from seven, not including seven, which is why it's parenthesis, to infinity. Oh my gosh. That looks so fancy. So those two are the same answer. And your teacher will probably tell you which, which answer they want, which form they want it in, or maybe they want it in both if, you know, it's a party. So those are both of those. Okay, it's time for my favorite part. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to pretend for a second. Don't freak out because I brought out a graph. We're going to pretend for a second that we have been asked to graph this. Okay, pretend we've been asked to graph y equals 1 over x squared minus 3x minus 28, okay? Pretend we've been asked to graph that. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on how to graph this because I actually have a video I will link in the corner where I graph this exact function. So if you need a better explanation than I'm giving in this video, check out that one. But if I were graphing this, the first thing I would do would be to figure out where my vertical asymptotes are, and I would set the denominator equal to zero and figure out that they are at seven and negative four. Okay, so there are my vertical asymptotes. The next thing I would do would be to look at the degree and figure out where my horizontal asymptotes are, and I would figure out that I have... I should say horizontal asymptote, not asymptote, sorry. And I would figure out that it is at zero, which is kind of hard to see when I draw it, but we, we know it's there. Okay, from there, I would then figure out where my x-intercept is, and I would actually figure out that this graph doesn't have an x-intercept, okay? Then applying what I know about graphs and asymptotes and all of these things, I would figure out that this graph looks something like this. Okay. Again, if you need a better explanation, check out that video I linked earlier. But now what? You're like, great, that's that graph. I'm really glad you showed me that. Why do I care? <laughs> Let me show you why I, you care. Remember my original question was, where is this greater than zero, right? Well, this is that graphed, right? So where is it greater than zero? Let's take a look. It is greater than zero from negative infinity to negative four, right? That's where this vertical asymptote is, is negative four. And then it's also above zero, greater than zero, from seven all the way to infinity. Guys, 
Isn't that so cool? What we were really doing was we were graphing and we didn't know it. We were being tricky about it. So when we set these equal to zero, what we were really doing was we were finding our vertical asymptotes. Okay. Now, if there had been um, an X plus or minus something on top, that would be finding my X intercepts that just didn't apply to this problem. But guys, isn't that so cool? That's what we were doing. We just didn't realize it. When we did the sign analysis, we were figuring out where we were above and below zero, right? Plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus. Isn't that cool? Marker drop. All right. I hope that made sense. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will link a playlist with some other examples for you. Thanks.